My question for you today is, are you rushing your bird photography, taking photos of birds? We're all guilty of it, sometime or another, but this can play a huge factor in the photos that you take home. Because if you're rushing, taking photo of bird, you might miss the best shot. Take for example this morning, I'm at Nudgee Beach, the tide's out, it's overcast. And what happens when the tide's out when you want to photograph waders and all the birds that live here? They're far out from you. You're not going to get good photos. I'm guilty of that too. I got here full of excitement. I'd seen posts that there was waders out here, so I got a like, beauty, I'm going to come out here. I walked out and what did I see? An oyster catcher. But it was in the distance. But I just couldn't help myself. I took a photo of it. And even though I shoot in DX crop mode, it was still quite far out. It was quite small. Then it hit me. Think like Charles. You tell people, don't rush your photos. What did you just do? I rushed it. And I looked and there were some mangroves around 50 meters away from me. And they could get me halfway to that oyster catcher. I walked back through the mangroves up to this mangrove that was quite close to it. And I got some great photos of it. I used the mangroves to my advantage. I got closer and I didn't rush. I could have been saying, yep, okay, I got that one. Move on. I'm going to rush around, try to get as many photos of these birds as possible. But I know better. And why do I know better? Because I've been there so many times that now I have to force myself. And believe me, sometimes when there's so many birds around, you have to force yourself saying, no, take a deep breath. <sighs> relax enjoy your time photographing birds get the best shot that you can even if it means missing other birds because for me what is the point of rushing around taking heaps of photos getting home and looking and thinking like well if i hadn't rushed i could have gotten a couple of really nice photos and i stayed at these mangroves and i looked around and through the leaves i could see there was a little egret but it was sort of covered in leaves but think like, okay, if I just stand still, it's feeding, it's looking around. There was a gap in the mangrove leaves. I'm like, I'm going to wait. I'm going to hope that the egret's going to move a little bit and it's going to get there. And soon enough, it started feeding again, slowly walking. The anticipation's growing, saying, yes, great, it's coming. Stops. And then it walked right between all the leaves. And I got a couple of great photos of it. I'm going like, wow. This is great. And that's the excitement you get. That is like the rush, the adrenaline you get in your body when you know you've got a great photo. And then I looked to my left and what did I see? They were just feeding. And you're like, okay, they're a little bit far, but there was two of them. They were feeding and they were just slowly walking towards me. But the mangrove tree was in my way because I was on the right of the mangrove tree. So I just slowly positioned myself on the left of the mangrove tree just waited and they were hardly moving. And I go like, great, I've only got my monopod today, but let's see if I can just take a little bit of video. And I got some video and I'm like, oh, beauty. Okay, let's just wait for it to get a little bit closer. Take it off video, got a bit closer. And I got some when it's just catching, like it looked like a seashell or something in the mud. You're like, beauty, that's great. But I'd been hearing a Tauresian kingfisher some people call them mangrove kingfishers because they like this habitat. And I'd been hearing it and I looked and it was about 50 meters away from me. And you're like, I know these kingfishers, they're very spooky. I'm just going to take my time. So I walked from where I was, walked a bit further along. It flew away like, yep, yeah, that's fine. I'll just take my time. Then it landed on a branch where I could get a clear shot of it. Took a couple of photos of it and it flew away. Looked at my camera and go, beauty. Another one. But do you know how long it took me to get from the oyster catcher to the kingfisher? Around 20 minutes. Now, I could have walked halfway around this area in 20 minutes, but I took my time. I didn't rush. Where I am at the moment, I'm only about a third of the way through. And I'm sitting here now talking because it's just been drizzling. And this was another thing why I thought like, well, half of me is saying like, rain could be coming any minute now. Let's get cracking and take photos before the rain comes. The experienced photographer in me told me, no, take your time. It's better to say, I only got a third of the way through this area, and I've gone home with a couple of really nice photos instead of rushing. Now the rain's clearing, so I'm just gonna keep walking and see what is else around. Because the tide's low, there's a lot of birds in the area over there. 
and I'm at the bird height here, and I can see there's a lot of birds around, but they're far from me. From here to there, there's nothing. It's just plain open. And I know the chances of getting close to these birds are near zero. So I'm not going to waste my time getting out into the mudflat there because waders can see you coming a mile away and they're just going to keep moving and moving and moving. So I'm just going to keep walking where I can use cover to get closer to the birds. And if they take off, well, just going to stand still, wait for them to settle down and keep walking, keep following them. And that's how you get great photos. So let's see what else we can take photos of. So this morning I've been talking about rushing to take our bird photos. That like we're scared to miss out a shot. So we quickly go from A to B to C. This area is quite big and thinking like, okay, I'm just going to rush around before the rains come in. But just 200 meters down here, the boardwalk is closed. If I had rushed this morning, I would have felt so much disappointment, so much frustration to get there and knowing that there's half a boardwalk left that I couldn't go to. Inside of me, I would have thought like, oh, I rushed so quickly because I was anticipating walking much further down there. All my effort to rush around would have been a waste. Now, just before I stopped recording, I told you that through the bird hide, I could see seagulls and waders, but they were so far out in the mudflat. When I stopped recording, I decided just to take a few photos to show how far away these seagulls were. And all of a sudden, I don't know what it was. It could have been a raptor flying around. All the seagulls took flight because they were scared of something. And I got some fabulous bird in flight images of the seagulls. It was just amazing. But if I'd been rushing around, looked at that go like, yeah, too far, keep walking, I just would have missed the perfect opportunity. Luck plays a part in there. But patience plays an important part. Now, I'm not saying that sometimes you don't have to rush because some birds move around so quickly that you have to act quickly. After I walked away from here, there was a grey fantail. And these fantails move around, they flicker from branch to branch. And it was just calling out, but it was very hard to get a show of it. There was branches in front, and I just took photos, hoping for the best. and moved around a bit, and I got a few photos, but all this happened very quickly. You tell me in the comments there, was it worth taking these photos? I think it was. Are they terrific shots? No, they're not. But I'm just still happy that I got a few photos. But overall, it is take your time. Don't rush things. And when I saw that the boardwalk was closed, I go like, okay, I can't take any more bird photos. I'm just going to take the 200, 500 off and put my Tekina 17 to 35 because I just wanted a few landscape photos of this area. And all of a sudden, the wind came. I was able to get one photo before the heavens opened up. So I packed everything away. And you're like, that's it. I'm going back to the car now. It's raining. Started walking back. Three minutes later, the rain finished. I'm a bit wet. And as I'm walking back, and what did I notice? A striped heron just on the mudflats. It just landed there. I like, I just can't miss this. But again, this is a bird that you've got to be very careful approaching. Took out my gear, changed over the lenses, put the 200 to 500 back on, put the monopod back on, and I walked amongst the mangroves. And all of a sudden, it just dashed like at least 50, 70 meters across the mud bank. I'm like, what's going on? And then I saw it. And it crouched down. I'm thinking like, okay, this is going to be a game of patience. It's crouched down because it's going to strike. It's going to catch something or try to catch something. So I waited and waited. And just on the top of the frame, I could see this white. And I looked up and it was a small egret. And it's just moving around. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to bide my time, you know, 50-50. Not really what you should do when a bird is getting ready to strike. But it's just sitting there. And then as I'm just panning back, I just missed when I saw the heron stand up and move. And I just got two shots of it. One just before it struck and the other one when it struck the water. And then kept taking photos. Did I get the shots of it standing up and striking? No, but I still got the shots of it striking. I just missed a couple of frames. But as a 50-50, I'm still happy. I got the egret, I got the heron, and that was it. Then another raptor flew around and everything took off. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a big thumbs up. Stay safe. Enjoy your bird photography. I'll see you later.